We um, designed a phase one to a study um, and the phase one was intended to look at the optimum dose of regorafenib in combination with a fixed dose of pembrolizumab at 200 milligram every three weeks. Um, the primary endpoint of the phase one, as I stated, was the finding the recommended phase two dose of regorafenib. The primary endpoint of the phase two was progression-free survival. Um, the study, at the time that the study was designed, I was at USC, and um, the study was uh, initiated at USC, University of Southern California, in um, June of 2019. Two other sites, um, Johns Hopkins and City of Hope, later joined the study. Um, the phase one portion of the study was completed in December of 2019, and the recommended phase two dose of regorafenib was 80 milligram given days one through 14 of a 21-day cycle. Um, and that was in combination with pembrolizumab about 200 milligram every three weeks. Um, the study completed at Cruel in um, July of 2021 with a total of 74 patients enrolled, um, one of which did not meet the eligibility criteria, so a total of 73 patients. Of the 73 patients enrolled, 70 of them were treated at the recommended phase two dose, which was 80 milligram of regorafenib. Um, the population was very um, kind of diverse, um, and um, uh, nearly half of the patients were non-white or non-Caucasian. And um, the, um, the about 23% of the patients had rectal cancer, the rest had colon cancer. 71% um, had RAS mutation. And um, um, this was, a, as expected, a heavily pretreated population with 67% with of the patients receiving the treatment of this trial in the third line setting and some receiving it in the subsequent lines of therapy. Um, Overall, um, the primary input, uh, uh, overall, um, the toxicities was con consistent with previously reported toxicities, with the most common grade three, four toxicities being rash. Um, other significant grade three, four toxicities was elevation in liver enzymes and hypertension, all of which, again, has been previously reported, and this was consistent with that. Um, in terms of the treatment, um, the median number of, um, of um, cycles um, given was um, um, three cycles ranging from one to 26. Um, at the time of this um, analysis, nine patients remained on therapy. And um, with a, a, a follow-up of 8.1 months, ranging from 0.6 to 24.4 months, the median PFS was two months, ranging 1.8 to 3.5. This did not meet the pre-specified uh, threshold for PFS. Um, and therefore, from the PFS standpoint, from the primary endpoint standpoint, this was a negative trial. However, we did see um, a very interesting signal in some subgroups of the patients. And, and um, that came out in the univariate analysis that uh, patients with um, no liver metastasis at, um, at the study entry had better PFS, um, and um, also patients who um, had surgery for metastatic disease had better PFS. And additionally, patients who had received prior radiotherapy, either for treatment of their primary disease or metastatic disease, had significantly better progression-free survival. In the multivariate analysis, um, combining all the variables with a, a p-value of less than 0.15. Um, the only variable that has stood out to be, um, to be significant in terms of progression-free survival was prior radiotherapy. In fact, among the um, 23 patients who had um, 
um, who received prior radiotherapy, the median um, PFS was 4.4 months, ranging 2 to 8.4 months. And um, the difference was statistically significant with a p-value of 0.0025. Now, what is interesting is uh, prior radiotherapy as a potential sensitizer to immunotherapy has been reported previously. Um, a manuscript by um, uh, first author uh, Shoverdian in Lancet Oncology in 2017 reported that in the population of non-small cell lung cancer, prior radiotherapy is a predictor of benefit from pembrolizumab. So this was not a surprise, but this was a new finding in the population of patients with GI malignancy and specifically with colorectal cancer. Additionally, those with no um, liver metastasis had significantly longer progression-free survival beyond four months. However, in the multivariate analysis, the lack of uh, liver metastasis was not significant for PFS. It was in, in univariate analysis, but not in multivariate analysis. Um, and um, therefore, we think the findings of the study, while the PFS was not met and the study was negative, um, opened the door to explore this treatment and combination in unique population, including potentially those with no liver metastasis, but more interestingly, in those who had received prior radiotherapy. Um, ongoing studies is looking at the correlatives of the patients with um, longer progression-free survival with a focus on those who received prior radiotherapy.